all. This is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with the end of project video for this 1-6 scale Armortech Radio Control Panther Alf G. Since the last video, the last of the model's details have been added and the model is now fully complete and is ready to be delivered to the client. We will be going over these last additions to the model in this video. For those who've stumbled onto this video for the first time, is a, here's a quick recap. The model started off as a 1-6 scale late production Armortech Panther G from the first production batch that Armortech had of this model uh, from about 2005. The model was first given to another model maker to build the model for the customer. However, after pretty much assembling the hull and some of the basic running gear, the model stayed in a partially built incomplete state for for several years. I was given the model to build by the client a few months ago and throughout the duration of the build I have made several modifications to both detail as well as functions to the stock armor tech kit and those details and functions are described in more detail in my other videos which are found in my video listing. Quick walk around the model The first addition that we'll talk about are going to be the side skirts that we see on the model. As was mentioned in an earlier video, the model originally came with several pieces of laser cut steel side skirts. These fenders are designed to mount to the model the same way they do on the real vehicle. In that, if you slide the panel, the, it unlocks itself from the two little notches there. The panels themselves were just primed and painted and they had their weathering added to match that of the vehicle. All of the panels are removable and they lock on as simply as they lo lock off. And there we have it. While we're on the lower extremities of the vehicle, we'll notice that on the center of all the hubcaps, the Zerk fittings or grease plugs have been added. The little grease fittings are mounted to the centers, and if we notice, are painted red. This is as per the real vehicle. These grease fittings would be used to help lubricate the bearings of the wheels on the torsion bars without having to remove the, the entire wheel. This is a common practice on all German tanks as well as heavy equipment in general. Moving our way up from the running gear, we have here the, chat, the jack block. As what was mentioned in the previous video, the previous builder had the jack block mount in the wrong position, it was slightly too high. Because of that, the corner here of the turret was hitting the jack block and making contact with it. Obviously that was unacceptable, especially since the turret needs to rotate. So what happened was, right after filming actually, the turret knocked off the jack block from its mount nice and cleanly, which allowed me to then remove the Zemmeret that was in the way and to lower the jack block mount to its proper location. As we could see from here, the boat with the cable and with the jack block, the turret can easily clear this area of the hull without there being any obstruction. To illustrate that, I will rotate the turret. As we can see, it clears both the cable and the block without any difficulties whatsoever. Moving our way on the model, we'll notice that the tow cables have been mounted. This Panther has three tow cables. You have the two main tow cables mounted on either side of the hull, and you have the track tow cable or track removal cable, which is spooled up on this location here adjacent to the track block. The tow cable for the main tow cable is actually a aftermarket set from six scale icons. The set includes a two lengths of steel cable along with two 
very detailed cast white metal end caps that have all their detail molded in. To, ins to assemble the pieces, what I did was I went ahead and drilled out the tow cable sleeve on a drill press and epoxied the tow cable inside the sleeve for a nice permanent bond. After the tow cables were assembled, they were simply painted and weathered. As for the track cable that's, that we have spooled here, this cable was fabricated by myself and is using a thinner gauge cable than that of the main tow cable as we can see here. The, this cable here is also fabricated out of steel, out of this actual steel cable and the loops here actually keep the whole cable together. This cable can actually unspool from this location here, like the real vehicle, however I don't recommend it as it's kind of a strong stiff cable and it will go all over the place if, if, if it is removed from its mounting bracket. After the cables were mounted, the last addition to the model was that of the spare tracks, which we see mounted here to the spare track rack. Now these spare track links that we see here are not the ArmorTech kit supplied ones. These track links here are actually aftermarket and are from a German track link company. I don't have the name on hand, however, if you look on the bottom of this video, we ha I have the link posted, as well as I also have the link posted in the uploader comments listed below. The links themselves are more accurate than the ArmorTech track links and are actually removable, just like the real ones. If I pop the two pins here, I will show the links in more detail. These links are probably the most accurate as well as properly detailed track links I've seen for the Panther 1.6 scale. The links themselves are actually casted in brass and are extremely durable and are extremely strong. They are most likely done with investment castings and have all of their detail present including the guide horn detail as well as even the internal cleat detail that we see here making this cleat here a hollow cavity. In comparison we have here the ArmorTech track link. Now the ArmorTech link is also very nice and is obviously very strong and durable for it to be used on the tank's running gear. However, if we look at the at the teeth, we'll see that this track here actually has a more accurate tooth than that of this stock armor tech. The only downside for these track links is that they do not fit the armor tech sprocket. And because of the material these are made in, the aluminum armor tech sprocket will not be durable enough to maintain the tank being RC with these track links for very long. Also, another downside to having these links as for an entire set is that they are cast in brass. The only problem with that is that when the model is running and gets scratched from driving, instead of having the scratched metal be a steel or silver color like on this cast aluminum link or this die cast link, you'll be having brass showing through, which can hurt the look of the model. However, for mounting as a spare track links on the side of your model, these track links are phenomenal and really do help with the look of the vehicle. It gives it those hollowed out teeth as well as the, teeth, uh, the tooth surface really give the model a nice detail element edge. The teeth or the track links simply slide onto the track rack and the chain retained pin simply gets slid into the hole that we have here. Also as of note, not only are the pins on the track links all chain retained, the pins here that hold the tow cable in place also have their retaining chain detail present. Also as we notice, the model currently has a cloth cover bag on the tank's muzzle. This cloth bag is a 1-6 scale aftermarket bag from a source. I'm not sure who the aftermarket supplier is for this bag. However, the bag itself is made out of cloth and actually has the little tie-downs just like it would on the real vehicle. The bag simply slips over the muzzle and ties on. The bag gives a nice little detail element to the model and is obviously not permanent in that you could remove it
And that concludes this end of project video for this 1-6 scale, fully radio controlled Armor Tech Panther ALF G. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 scale tang builds, as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.